How's it going, everybody? I want to give a quick thanks to everybody on the channel that has been here for a while, or if you're new, thanks for stopping by. Um, one of the things that I've been doing as I've been uh, studying for my CCIE and service provider is checking out uh, different technologies and different features in the XR platform. And a couple of things that I've ran across lately are uh, it's pretty cool, actually. Um, and they're not so well known capabilities and, and whatnot. So what I plan on doing, and this is going to be the first video of who knows how many. Um, but what, my goal is to take the not so well known stuff and uh, put content together for it. You know, however long the video takes, it takes. Um, but we're going to focus on different technologies that are on the XR platform, that are on the iOS platform, um, that may or may not necessarily uh, specifically point themselves to the service provider track, but are you know techniques or a feature that you may not be as well aware of or may not be documented that well or known about. Um, and I'm going to hit those topics just so that there's a, a reference out there online that somebody can Google and be like, oh, there's somebody did a video on it. Let's go watch this. You know, and one thing that uh, one thing that I've been um, I've been told that I'm I can be wordy. You know, I can be a, a full of hot air sometimes. You know, so be it. You know, it's it's my channel. <laughs> um, but a, a lot of the times, the reason why I'm so wordy and the reason I'm so you know it takes me so long to get across or I. I explain things thoroughly so you understand what it is you're reading. So that's one of the things that I wanted to call out real quick is that's okay if you don't like if you want to fast forward to the video and get to the point go for it. Um, you know that's why they had the fast forward button and the pause and the rewind so it's you're in control of how much you see. Um, but at any point in time um, uh, just make sure that you understand what it is you're watching that you, you don't miss something that I may have previously said or I reiterate something later on. Uh, I have a tendency of recapping what I did later on in a video and stuff like that. So just keep these things in mind when you're, you know, if you're like, God, this guy won't ever shut up. And, you know, you fast forward a minute, you know, and then you find out that you had to go back to where you, you know, you're like, oh my God, this guy never shuts up. And then two seconds later I go, and now, you know, so just, it's one of those things that I, I, I find myself doing with some YouTubers and some uh, online, some uh, vendors that I see that they're like, it's blah, 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 yakety, yakety, and then they get into the thing and it's like, dude, really? And that's one of the things that I do on Rutgers Island. I don't sit there and give you a 10-minute a intro or you know correlate this to something. I always dive right into it because that's what you're there for. At any rate, um, based off the title of this video, uh, we are going to be dealing with groups and apply groups, which falls underneath the flexible configuration for the CLI in iOS XR. Now, again, this is one of those not so well known capabilities and topics, and I'm going to be, uh, we're going to focus on a small portion of it, but it's important to understand what's going on with what you're doing. And there's um, using the group command to build configurations and then apply these configurations in different in a hierarchical manner um, it needs to be understood so I'll take you to the website real quick to show you how to navigate to find the documentation for one and how to interpret what it's saying because I find a lot of people they're like um, and, and me included I mean there's been a lot of stuff I'm going like oh my god uh, the one thing that I'm struggling with currently I haven't actually been hitting it lately is the um, at the the attachment circuit for a layer two VPN? Whether it's you know um, uh, point to point, point to multi point, or what have you, um, being able to tear off a VLAN header and reapply it over here and make all that work. I mean, that's just like oh my god, blows my mind because whenever I do like a layer three VPN. It's got a, you know, the VLAN over here and the VLAN over here are different, which I get that, but that makes sense because it's layer three diversity. Um, it's a layer two stuff where these guys here are, you know, they're talking to each other. So, you know, just it's uh, something I'm still trying to wrap my head around. Um, and uh, there's been a, there's some decent references online for it. 
and eventually it'll just come down to be where I'll just have to sit down and, you know, have Wireshark running and doing be doing debugs and go one night and it'll just hit me. So let's go take a look at Cisco's website real quick and I will walk you through how to navigate to the documentation so you can find what it is you're looking for. Now I personally am a big fan of um, I bookmark whenever possible. So one of the things if you click on Cisco and you go down to service provider and you come over here to XR, I've got all the configuration and command references already pre-bookmarked so that I can find them easily. However, I also don't like to sit and look at web pages all day long, so I also have all the same PDFs downloaded and they're local to my machine, which is actually how I'm doing it right here. If you look right here, I've actually got the configuration pulled up. So that's basically how I go about doing that. But I'm going to show you how to navigate to it so you can know where it's at. So if you click underneath, um, if you click on at iOS and NXOS software, and then you click on iOS XR, then iOS XR software, that's going to bring you to this page. This is the landing page for, for the config. You're going to scroll down to configuration guides. And then you're going to look for the 6.0 code and on the ASR 9K. The NCS is a little bit different. So um, it's the same version of code, different platform. So uh, you're going to want to pay attention to the ASR 9000, which is right down here. So here's the ASR 9000. And then we're going to scroll down to 6.0 code, which is the version of code you're going to want to focus on when you are studying for your CCIE and service provider. One of the things that I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here to System Management. Click on System Management. That's going to bring up a new page. If you scroll down a little bit, about halfway, eh, maybe a third of the way through, you're going to have this flexible command line interface configuration guides. Click on this guy, and this is going to be where you navigate. So this is the documentation that I've been reading. It actually gives you a lot of flexibility for a lot of different areas. So one of the things that you'll find is as you're going through here, as you're configuring stuff, you're able to configure a group and then basically compact a lot of stuff to that. So if you have to come in here and do some sort of configuration for something, uh, regardless of what it is, let's say for instance, um, I was messing around with this last night and one of the things that I did was I configured a logging group. So you configure the logging underneath here, trap notifications, console debugging, monitor debugging, bug, uh, buffered, you know, uh, was it 10 million, something like that. Um, and then you up end the group and then you apply the group with the G logging. So what you're essentially doing, you're applying this, but this is the configuration for this right here. So uh, consider it, if you're familiar with BGP peer groups or the BGP template, um, a lot of times, that's basically how I would associate that. It's no, really no different than a prefix list um, and, and then um, in the condensing of configuration. So you're trying to make things a little more configuration friendly, if you will. What we're going to be focusing on here, and if you, let's see here, there's one specific thing I wanted to point out to you guys, that's why I've got the configuration pulled up, is not so much the, the priority inheritance um, which, uh, which actually is a good thing that, that happened to, uh, to uh, roll over is um, they have different levels of uh, hierarchy. So the lower the value, so one and two, is more preferred than six and seven. At least that's the, my understanding of how this comes into play. So, um, so you can figure the interface. Oh, here it is, right here. So one thing that I want to point out is I use a lot of sub interfaces on in my environments, especially for the uh, iOS XR boxes and the XC boxes. Is um, and it says here sub interface. To specify a sub interface, prefix the expression with the characters backslash period. Uh, so basically, what it's saying is if you want to apply this to a gigabit interface, that could be any formatted gigabit interface. That could be gig. 0 slash 0 slash 0, gig 0 slash 0 slash 0 slash 0, gig 1.1. One one. Um, if whatever the nomenclature is for your gig, this basically says all of them. So what you're basically saying here is with this backslash dot, you need to put the parentheses uh, in, in there, or I, could, I guess you could say it's call that a half a parentheses, or um, sorry, half of a quote. So you put your first quote in there, 
and then you would specify gigabit and then dot and then the star and then the backslash and the dot that's indicating subinterfaces and then you have your dot star quote to finish to close the line so it's kind of html html tag like in the respect of how it's doing it where you have your um you have your bracket then you have your backslash to end the command so it's kind of that kind of thing um, or if you're going to quote multiple uh, multiple pipes in iOS XR, like you want to say show run router OSPF pipe this pipe that you need to put those in quotation marks in order for it to take. So uh, I'm not going to be doing layer two transport, but uh, and or point to point. What I'm going to be focusing on here is an IS to IS configuration, and the reason why I'm going to show you that is because we bring up our topology here. You'll notice that up here in this configuration. I've got a lot of point-to-point -point connections. So XR7 has one, two, three, four connections to all the other routers. So that's four different times I had to hit the up arrow and I have to, you know, exit something back and type in address family IP before unicast, point-to-point network type, uh, address family IPv6, etc., etc. Um, so rather than doing it repeatedly, the concept of the apply group or the group command. Go ahead and pull up secure CRT here is and I don't have applied, this applied everywhere I've only got this applied in a couple of places is I'm going to show you what it looks like from the perspective of the group command so I'm going to go ahead and log in real quick if we do a show run group you'll see here that the way the groups work is, and I've been playing around with a few of them so just bear with me here so we have this one I call it group gig eight. so basically what I've done is I've gone under I've created a group called giggy and when you're doing this and you want to apply it underneath the global routing process, you're almost configuring the group in the same manner you would just normal configuration. The difference between the group and the non-group configuration is you're basically setting a bunch of wildcards where user configurated stuff is going to be placed. The ISIS tag number, the actual interface address, or the interface that you're going to be using, things of that nature. So what you're going to do is I create a group giggy. I said underneath the router ISIS whatever uh, process for interface anything gigabit gig, gigabit zero 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 dot whatever configure the interface to be a point to point connection and then place it in both the address family IPv4 unicast and v6 unicast address families okay now I've got a couple other ones here that aren't quite working out quite so well and I'm still trying to figure out what it is that I'm doing wrong or if I am doing something wrong. But what I eventually did is I did a show run router ISIS. So here on XR4, what I've done is I've got all these individual con connections here. And I did this for um, just, again, I'm just playing around with the technology so that I get a better understanding of how it works. So all I did was I created the ISIS process globally. You know, it's a uh, it's a level two only IS type. Um, the net address um, for address family IPv4 unicast. We're doing metric style wide MPLS traffic engineering, um, and then we're doing metric style wide for V6. Uh, metric style the metric style has to uh, be agreed upon when ISIS adjacencies come up. So if you've got one that's doing uh, narrow. Uh, metric style and then the other routers doing wide they're not going to agree on on that because they don't speak the same metric style you can do transition which will do both but that's one of the things you got to keep in the back of your mind so what I did is I created the connection from XR4 to XR5 and XR4 to XR8 which is 1415 and 1418 and I said apply group gig e, which when you do this automatically applies this stanza this syntax right here it says for any gigabit interfaces, apply the point-to-point -point connection and then do the address family v4 and v6 unicast. So if I type in show ISIS interface brief, you're going to see that I have both of those connections up and running. And you're going to see that I have just level 2 adjacency with those guys. And if I come in here and I have uh, come up here and I do a uh, show ISIS neighbor, you're going to see that I have two neighbors. I have one to XR8 and I have one to XR5. And I have the total neighbor count is two, and they are both the sub, -net sub network point of attachment is point to point. It's level two adjacency and all as well. So that configuration, I can repeat that. So the benefit comes into play when you're configuring the group 
So instead of me having to go to like, for instance, let's take us over to XR1, I believe it is. Yeah, XR1. So let's take a look at XR1 real quick. Just so if you haven't seen this configuration or you're like, okay, why is that a benefit? Um, I wouldn't show you something if I didn't think it might be worth your time. So we do a show, uh, show run router OS, router OSPF. So basically the idea here is like this. So here it's a little cleaner in OSPF because the fact that you don't have to specify the address family. But if you look at it here, I have to specify each individual interface. That's, that's actually kind of a bad example. Uh, let's go to XR7. That's a little bit, it's ISIS. So what I'm going to do is once I log in, is I'm going to come to show run router ISIS, and you're going to get this mountain of output. So literally all I'm doing here is I am all these individual interfaces. Here I've got a bunch of I got four different interfaces that I would have to apply the configuration for. So that means I have to go underneath this interface and apply this address family, and then you know if I've got multiple configuration commands like the uh, the authentication, I've got timer values and all kinds of additional stuff. I don't have to worry about that. I can simply apply that underneath the uh, the interface. So what I get to do is I can go back to XR4 and I can say I'm going to steal this config. So let me, let me actually walk you through what it looks like to do and then I will for XR7 I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to come back over here and go config and I will get rid of all the individual interfaces and I will use a apply group to get that done. So the first thing you need to do is configure the group. So group and then the name, we're going to type this as Giggy. It doesn't have to be anything special, but it is case sensitive. So I recommend anytime you do anything you have to configure, use, uh, use uh, all caps to do that. And not in email, not in text messages, and surely not in chat messages, but in iOS quite alright. So now what I have to do is because this configuration is going to be centered and centric to a routing protocol, I'm going to type in router ISIS and I have to uh, go in here and type the um, the uh, uh, the apostrophe dot asterisk apostrophe. What I'm doing here is I have to come in and I'm basically saying router ISIS whatever and then under here I get to specify the interface configuration. You, if you decide to do interface configuration outside of a global routing protocol you're going interface level specific and you're going to be doing things like MTU and you know things of that nature. So different uh, different output and uh, may or may not be applicable. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to type in interface question mark and I have all these different commands. Now, now you'll notice here the configuration is a little bit different than the output. So the, the thing is when you're underneath the group it's going to be almost like you're underneath the global routing process but you're going to get stuff like this where it says gigabit ethernet and it's going to say regex. It's expecting you to type some sort of regular expression in in order to make this stuff work. So this is one of those things where you need to remember what it is that you're trying to type in and how you're going to get it there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I already copied gigabit and what you need to do is at the very beginning of the line it, this is an indication right here where it's going to be apostrophe the identifier and an apostrophe so what I'm going to do is I'm literally going to go back to the beginning of gigabit apostrophe control E and then I've got to type in here as a little uh, little clue G at first to get it to work but what you end up having to do is you've got to come over and let's uh, just I'm going to actually just reference this command because I don't want to get it wrong. Um, you need to specify this command output. So star uh, dot star or period star, and then you're going to say backslash dot, which is going to indicate sub interfaces dot star apostrophe. What you're basically saying here is it's got to be a gig. So this is your first line right here. This is like your uh, your your regular expression. So you're going to say your regular expression and include any sub interfaces right here and then trap it up. So it's got to be one, it's got to be a gigabit interface. It doesn't matter what the 
the follow-on line card limitations are, whether it's gig 0, gig 00, gig 000, that doesn't matter. And then you're going to specify subinterface. So I'm literally just going to grab this line of config right here, just so I don't get it wrong. Go over to XR7 and type that in. So that's going to indicate that I want to make this a gigabit, um, gigabit and subinterface uh, specific configuration. I type that. Now what I get to type in here is the address family IPv4 unicast. I get to exit out and then um, type in v6 because eventually we're going to be running v6. Exit out one more time and I want to make this a point to point connection. So I could do point to uh, point is the only one they option because ISIS is broadcast and point to point. That's all you have the ability to do. So now I've got that done. I'm going to come in here and do a show config. And that is your syntax. Not very complicated, but what it's going to allow you to do is re uh, repetitive configuration can be minimized by using the group command. Really no different than using a peer group in BGP or a template in BGP. So now I get to type in end-group. That gets me out of that, com that command sequence. So now I get to go router isis1 and I get to type in do show run router isis1. And what I'm going to do is I'm literally going to say no interface this guy, this guy, this guy, 1718 and 1719. Okay, so now by typing that in, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to commit the command. Now the reason I'm going to commit now and not later is because I want to apply the group command and I want to get rid of the interfaces under XR7. So I'm going to go ahead and commit that. Now one thing that I want to point out to you real quick is we are using the point to point command underneath the interfaces now, which means that I will have to double check on the adjacent routers like XR8, R9, or XR9, R6, XR6 to ensure that the remote end of the connection is running the exact same network type. And if they're different network types, they won't form an adjacency. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to commit that change. That takes just a moment to config. And then once that's done, now I get to type in here, I get to actually go up back up to six, uh, uh, 617, go back to the end, hit the this guy and type in apply group, and then question mark, and I get to say giggy. Now, it says apply group remove, apply group append. I'm only focusing on the first option here, which is just the apply group. If you, I might do another YouTube video where I talk about groups and other capacity, but that's basically where I want it to sit. So now I come up here and I go 1617, apply group giggy. I go uh, 1718, apply group giggy. And then the last one here, 19, and then apply group giggy. So I'm gonna do a show config. And that is your whittled down configuration. Now I go get to go ahead and type in commit. And there it goes. So now if I type in do show run router ISIS, and I've, what the error you're getting now, or you're seeing now, I should say, is an inappropriate code. Basically, ISIS packet 16 is an indication that you have the wrong network type. So it's point to point on 17 to 18, all right, 17, it's actually not, it's broadcast on 18. So I'm gonna just hit the enter key here so you guys can see the output. It slims down the configuration significantly. So now what I get to do is uh, do show run group on XR7. I'm literally gonna take this command right here. I'm going to take it over to XR8 and I'm gonna go ahead and log in. And I'm gonna repeat the process again. Go to global config, and once you've got the con the group configured, I recommend deploying it everywhere you need to. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say do show run router isis1, and then once I've got that, I'm going to go ahead and okay. So it's point to point on some of them except for the one that I needed on. I'm actually going to go to this level of interface. I'm going to type in router isis1. And I'm going to type in no. I'm going to start pulling these interfaces out because I want to use the apply group again. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to say no. And then the next one, 187 is 1418. And then 1418, 1518. And then 1718. 
Okay, I'm going to commit the config there so that I can go ahead and reapply it. So I'm going to type in the same commands again, just like I did in the previous video, or the previous example. Go back to the end of the line and say apply group gigi. And then just basically do the same thing. 14, 18, apply, uh, apply group is gigi. So it's just a matter of repetition at this point, just to play with it. And then 17, 18, and then we should be in pretty good shape. So uh, apply group gigi. So if I do a show config, you're going to see that I've just applied that apply group to all the interfaces. I'm going to go ahead and commit the change now. They will all inherit the IPv4 and IPv6 unicast address families, as well as the network type point to point. And if I come in here and do a do show IS, IS interface brief, and now we're getting in on 187, which means I have to go apply it to R7, and that's an actual, I, there's no such thing as the group command in uh, iOS. So I've got to go over here to R7, which now we're getting an LDP adjacency issue. It's not an LDP adjacency issue, so don't let that throw you off. You do a show run interface gig 1.187, and we have to go and read that interface, interface gig 1.187, and type in ISIS network is point to point. That'll bring up the uh, ISIS adjacency, and then it also should bring up the LDP adjacency. Do show ISIS neighbor, and we'll have it's up to XR8, and there it goes. So we're back on, up on uh, XR6, or I'm sorry, I should say uh, uh, R6. And I have a connection to um, 18. 18 is, oh yeah, right there. So I have all my connections back up. So that that's good to go. Everything is good to go there. Um, so at that point, the configuration is taken and it's working effectively. So on XR8, if I come up here and hit the enter key kit, now we have all the adjacencies up. We're going to type in neighbors, and I have adjacencies with R7, XR4, XR5, and XR7, all using the point-to-point -point network type, and we're using the apply group. So if I do a show, show group, or is it show apply group? Apply group. Um, this is where um, the reference count comes into play. I mean, it's just some basic stuff. I do show interface gig dot, uh, let's see, we're on XR8, so 15, 18. There's nothing really at the interface level that gives you any indication that anything is going on. It just knows the work because it's been told what to do. So that is one of the things that's kind of cool about this command is you can, uh, bundle commands together and make things easy to work with. That's just one of many you can do. And I felt like applying uh, it at the interface level would have been nice. You could, if you were so inclined, let me do, let me go to XR9 and do this because it's a little thinner on this overall config. So let's go back to XR4 and I'm going to pull this command out and I'll apply it over to um, XR9 because it's not as many uh, interfaces to configure. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change it up a little bit. I'm going to move the, the application of the uh, apply group up one level. So we're going to not going to do it individual interfaces at a time. We're going to do it at all interfaces at one time. So I'm going to go to global config and I'm going to go ahead and copy the, that page and config that in there. Do show run router is router ISIS1. I'm going to go to router ISIS1 and then no interface this guy here and 1719. Uh, commit that change. And then all I have to do now is come in here type in apply group apply group and it's giggy and then I have to specify interface here and here show config and it applies it to the, applies it at the main level of ISIS and then it applies it to all the interfaces so now if I come in here and type the commit command 
this should assign it to the interfaces. So if I come in here and do a do show ISIS interface brief, give that a second to do its pull, the interfaces are there, and there's the adjacencies, the adjacencies are up now, show ISIS neighbor. My neighbors are up, level two connections, do show run router ISIS. And notice that there, I mean, the configuration has been thinned out uh, so much, it's, it's like, wow, that's pretty nice. Um, but this is what I'm talking about when it comes to thinning out your configuration. If I could, if you get comfortable with this configuration, it's one of those things that's really, really easy to work with. And this makes a lot of sense for doing a lot of repetitive configuration. I can't say this is going to be your, your answer for everything, because um, honestly, it's not. I mean, there's going to be some things in here like... Um, I haven't played with this with BGP, but just out of curiosity, if you were to type in uh, group uh, BGP and specify router BGP um, and come underneath here and type in, like, um, if we were to specify, I believe it is a, uh, is it an address, session group, session group, um, and we'll specify, um, I think I have to do this again. Now I'm going into our uncharted territory. I have not tested this out yet. We can specify, um, okay, so this must be the wrong one. This is a session, not a, um, so for instance here, we could do like remote AS. We could say remote, remote AS, uh, remote AS, and then specify the value. So let's say just, just for kicks and giggles, I'll say, uh, 10 and then the update source will be loopback zero and the password will be you know uh, Rikers Island training and then if I do a show config I'm actually not going to attempt this but that would be your configuration so what you would basically say is for group BGP for anything any uh, router BGP and for any session group you would apply this and then you'd apply this globally and it should apply to uh, any of your neighbors, any IBGP peers, because obviously it's update source loopback zero. And if I was to exit out of here and specify like a neighbor, neighbor dash group, and specify uh, this guy under here, I'd be able to say, you know, like, uh, no, sorry, this is, the same thing as before. I am looking for an uh, is it, oh, address family group. AF group, probably the same line, yep. And then um, AF group, address family, IPv4, and then unicast. Underneath here, you'd specify like your route reflector client, and you'd specify your, um, your AF or your AS override, you'd specify things like your, um, oh, there's a uh, default originate, you know, default originate, and then stuff like that. Then you do a show, uh, show config on that. And then you would just come in here and, uh, so you'd have the ability to configure this in groups and then apply this globally and your BGP config, instead of being, you know, scroll length, where you've got to scroll and scroll and scroll, excuse me, it would be, you know, router BGP, um, you know, apply group uh, BGP, and then everything would just be taken care of. So, I mean, it's a little more to it than that. I'm going to play around with this a bit more, but I'm just giving you some ideas as to what else you could do this with. You can do this with interface level configurations at the MTU and things like that. If I was to actually... Uh, end dash group um, and do group and you specify like interface interface and say uh, interface you know uh, gig gigabit ethernet and let's just say dot star dot whoop, star and under here, you can specify all kinds of stuff. I can specify the duplex, the dot one q, a VLAN, um, whether it's going to be an LA part of a, an LACP bundle, 
um, IPv4 subcommands, MPLS, you know, uh, the speed, the duplex, the VRF. You can do a lot with this. How far you want to take it, I guess, is really up to you. Um, like I said, it's one of those things where you it's it's almost like a trade-off amount of configuration. How much um, how many groups do you want to configure to have templatized configuration to where I can take that template and apply it to something? Well, if I'm only going to configure that one thing once, does it really pay off for me to have a group configured for it? But if I got to go configure, you know, MPLS traffic engineering, and I've got to go configure uh, MPLS LDP, and I got to configure OSPF, and I got to configure BGP. You know, it might pay off to have a lot of repetitive configuration done ahead of time in a group. It might take you two minutes to write the groups out, and then once you've got the groups written out, then it's just a matter of applying them. So what normally might take me a half an hour to literally build out six or seven routers, I could do that maybe five. You take the apply group, you apply it to all the bunch of routers, and then you just call the apply group. All you're doing is you are, it's a, it's complete configuration scalability. It's giving you the ability to, to scale your config and make you that much faster. So these are just some of the things that I would recommend uh, people do if you are looking at options for learning the configuration. Again, I'm going to continue to do these videos on a pretty regular basis as I go through my SP preparation as I get into my written exam and I'm hoping to take the written exam here pretty soon. Uh, I still got I'd say a hand I think I've only got now that I'm uh, now that I'm pretty much done with my example I'm not gonna apply the um, actually before I go do that let me go ahead and um, commit that configuration. Um, I don't think I ever finished the uh, do show run group. I don't think I applied yeah I didn't apply that group yet. So let me go do show run router ISIS1 before I go off on a tangent. Let me just finish this up. So, oh yeah, I did. Yeah, I, I did. Giggy, yeah, okay, never mind. I, I did. Um, so, um, right now as it sits, I've got, I'm working on a, on a, uh, a notepad doc that is, um, will be released once I get a little further down the road. I'm actually in the process of taking a lot of the RNS material that I already had and I'm incorporating it into this one big service provider no, uh, notepad and I'm going to be working on putting it into like Google Docs because I find myself if I'm out and about you know and whatever or you know I'm somewhere and I'm you know I'm just kind of sitting around I'll pull up a PDF of some documentation, I'll read the documentation and I'll say, okay, well that's something I want to remember. So I'll pull up, I usually have a note, I have a notepad app on my phone that allows me to go in there and do some stuff and it takes some like what they call S notes because I have a note for, um, do some stuff like that. But the problem being is, is it doesn't, um, it doesn't parse well with notes or, or uh, not notes, um, notepad or uh, stuff like that. So I've been finding myself going on to Google Docs a lot lately, creating a Google Doc, and then applying it there. Because once I apply it, do it there, I've got it pretty much everywhere. Same thing with um, OneNote. I use OneNote to to do some stuff. Um, but it, at the end of the day, it's one of those things that comes in handy with some of the operations that I'm looking at doing. Because there's so much information out there that I, I'm trying to compile, and I'm trying to compile it all in one spot. And uh, the notepad document that I'm working on right now, uh, again, is a uh, is an extension of the RNS stuff that I did when I was studying for my first CCIE, and I'm at 6,800 lines. And what I'm doing is I'm taking the documentation that I'm reading, and an additional stuff like, you know, uh, basically all the different avenue or uh, resources that I'm using to study for the service spreader exam. I am uh, I'm basically bundling all the the resources into one document, and I'm going to use that document to build out my service provider course that I eventually will be teaching. Um, but I, right now I'm I I put service provider training materials like stuff that I would actually be working on developing to teach. I put all that stuff on hold. I'm in the process now of 
Um, I'm wrapping up the, at least the time of this recording, I'm wrapping up the route workbook, and I am, I, I've got the switch topology, I think, pretty much all worked out. I'll be, um, the topology and whatnot will be released here uh, soon. And then I had a couple of requests for the GNS3 file for route that will be released here. Um, once I get all the workbook portions of it complete, there's a couple of things that I have to go back and finish up that I over that I either I missed or I didn't complete one of the two. Um, so I'll get that. And then the workbook I'm hoping to have out by the end uh, end of the first week of May. And once I get that taken care of, that'll be my next to get that out of the way. I don't want to start doing CCMP switch until I get the workbook for route knocked out. You know, I don't want to like get sidetracked and go, oh yeah. Because uh, then that'll be released. And um, there was a question about the pricing of the um, the workbook for CCMP, and they will both the, all three workbooks will be individual purchases, uh, but they won't be expensive. You know, they'll be uh, reasonable. I don't think workbooks should be more than forty five dollars. I mean, really, because the amount of time that goes into them, it's um, you know, workbooks I wanted to be relatively inexpensive. Uh, I could charge hundreds if I wanted to, but I don't see the value in doing that because, you know, you're already paying a ton of money for the, uh, I shouldn't say a ton. You're already paying for the, the, the video series. So I want to make it reasonable. So you're like, Oh, okay. I'm, you know, $180 to me just doesn't, there's, I don't, I can't see justifying $185 for, you know, for that. So keep it cheap, keep it easy. And then more people will be gravitate toward it. I don't want to be like, dirt cheap but you know I think 45 bucks for a workbook is pretty good and that's probably going to be the the running average for uh, the workbooks itself but um, so yeah it's, it's basically where I'm at with that um, I want to thank you guys again for all of your support and all of the the positive feedback I've been getting lately you guys have been awesome uh, don't don't stop um, that, that really helps if there's anything you would like to see um, in the videos or there's a a technology in either iOS or XR that you've ran across or you've heard about and you would like to see demonstrated and I think it might be doable um, I'll go ahead and toss it in like a, the groups command I'm gonna be hitting a lot of stuff but I can't think of everything somebody might want to see and you might want to know how to do something that isn't necessarily on the exam or on the blueprint so let me know and I can take I can hopefully accommodate and go from there. Until next time, guys, thank you so much for stopping by, and we'll catch you in the next one.